What's going on guys and welcome to what is essentially two reviews in one video. The first half of this video is going to be dedicated to my evaluation of the Model 30 in and then the rest of this video is going to be dedicated to my thoughts on how it sounds when you combine it with the matching Model 30 integrated amplifier. Now before I begin I need to lay down an important disclaimer. So my evaluation of the Model 30 in is only going to be related to CD and SACD playback because here's the deal guys. I don't stream my music, nor do I use units like these as standalone DACs. And look, I realize this is going to be disappointing to some of you. I know it limits the utility of this video, but the bottom line is I have no business talking about streaming. Instead, I'm going to stick with what I know and what I'm confident in. So if you're cool with that, let's kick things off by taking a closer look at the Model 30 in. All right guys, so here it is, the Marantz Model 30 in SACD network player. Now before I begin, I need to let you all know that this scene is going to be static. The reason being is I'm trying out a new camera right now and as it turns out, the image stabilization is totally garbage. So instead of forcing you guys to watch a whole bunch of digital blur, I decided that this would be the best compromise. So about the Model 30 in. It's designed and made in Japan. It weighs in at a hefty 30 pounds and retails for $2,500. Now some of you will notice that the internal layout looks a little bit like the KI Ruby. And that's because what you're getting is based off of the circuit of the Ruby, only it uses less expensive parts along with a different voicing scheme. Oh, did I also mention it contains a full-on network player? Which honestly guys, is rather impressive given how the Ruby alone retails for $4,000. Now, if you're curious about the streaming capabilities of this unit, then click on the description box and follow the link to get that information. Honestly, the only thing that I can remember is that it supports streaming up to five gigahertz, is compatible with the usual services, comes with a downloadable app, and will turn off the power supply for the CD player while you stream in order to achieve a lower noise floor. So now let's talk about CD as a CD playback. Morantz uses a Philips drive unit along with a Burr Brown DAC chipset. When playing back regular CDs, it's important to note that this unit will up-convert them to DSD-256 and then perform a 1-bit conversion at the analog stage, all the while using Marantz's own digital filters. The player itself will also support all major file types and will even play back DVD-R and DVD-RW discs. Anyways guys, that's it for the general synopsis of this unit, so now let's quickly go over the front, then we'll look at the back, and then I'll finally talk about how it performs. Okay, so here's the front of the unit, so let's quickly go over the features that you get. Starting from left to right, we have a power button on the very left. Once you hit that, you'll notice that the Marantz logo will pop up on the display case, and here soon you will also notice that it will display the information of the CD that I have sitting in the tray. Now to the right of that, we're going to have a control wheel for the CD. This allows you to stop pause, play, fast forward, and rewind the disc, even though most of you are going to use remote control for that function. Now down below, we have the button that'll allow you to open and close the CD tray. And then next to that, we have our input selector knob. Now to the very right of the display, we have a phono level adjustment. So this actually has a built-in discrete headphone amplifier that'll output 50 milliwatts into 32 ohms, which honestly guys, isn't too powerful. And if I had to be entirely honest, it's more like a convenience feature because this isn't really going to satisfy the critical headphone enthusiast. It's just there for you to be able to power most average headphones fairly well. Now, next to that, we are going to have our little control panel for streaming. Again, most of you are going to use your remote control or an app for that, but there are going to be some physical buttons if you're that kind of a person. And we also have a back button. So all in all, the operation of this unit is very straightforward when playing back CDs. I noticed that, yeah, you can hear it when you're close to the unit, but otherwise sitting about five or six feet away, you're not going to notice any noise whatsoever. So now let's quickly look at the back and then let's talk about how it performs. Oh yeah, here's the remote. It's the same one that you get with the integrated amp. Okay, so here's the back of the Model 30 in, so let's quickly go over the different inputs and outputs that you get. Starting in the very top hand left corner, we have a spot for the Bluetooth Wi-Fi antenna. And the cool thing about this unit is you actually get two of them, one on each corner. And then beneath that, we have our audio out. Now you guys are going to notice that there's a fixed and a variable output, and you may be wondering which one should you use. Well, it goes like this. If you're going to connect this to say an integrated amplifier or a preamplifier, then use the fixed output. But if you have say powered speakers, or if you just wanna use a power 
power amplifier, then use variable. And the thing is, this unit actually has the ability to control the volume. So it just really depends on what is going to be most appropriate for you. So moving on, we have this five volt USB connection. And the cool thing I like about that is, you know about those LED strip lights that you can buy off Amazon for like 10 bucks? You can actually connect that to this unit. It will power them and then you can just kind of jazz up the living space a little bit. Definitely something worth checking out if that's your aesthetic vibe. Next to that, we have a network connection so you can connect this directly to a LAN. And then next to that, we have our digital out, so coax and an optical out. And then next to that, we have a number of different digital inputs, USB input, we have coax and two optical inputs. Beneath that, we have a spot for home automation use, a flasher in, an RS-232C, along with a spot for a remote control in and output. Now next to that, we have our IEC inlet for the power cord, and guys, that is it. So now it's finally time to talk about how it performs. Okay guys, so this evaluation is going to be unusually short and to the point. And that's because the Model 30N is one of those components that has a very distinct and obvious sonic character, possessing a sound that I would describe as being warm, dark, laid back, and full bodied. So what does that mean exactly? Well, think of it like this. If you're in the market for a digital source in this price range and you know you want a fatigue-free listening experience, you want a smooth top end, yet you want mid-range that's warm and full-bodied, well, there's a good chance that you're really going to like this unit. However, if you're somebody who believes that your digital source should be neutral in nature, then yeah, this isn't for you. Nor is it going to be for somebody who hopes for a more lively and forward-sounding presentation. So to explain what I mean, let's dive into the details starting with the treble. Overall, I would say the treble has a sound that can be described as forgiving yet refined because this is where the smoothness comes from. The treble is just a little bit rolled off and this has both positive and negative implications. So the good news is due to its sound, you should be able to access most of the music in your digital library without having to worry about running into sibilance and harshness, which should give you confidence in listening to the music that you really enjoy. So what is the downside then? Well, I could see some people listening to this unit and wishing that it had more liveliness and energy to the top end. Ultimately, how you experience the treble will hinge a lot on the system that you attach this component to. It's all about synergy, which is something that I'll talk about in just a moment. But next, let's move on to the mid-range. So the mid-range, in my opinion, is the star to show here because it does such a great job of balancing clarity with warmth. It's open, yet at the same time, there's this body to the sound that helps to give the presentation some real density. It has great tone, great texture. It sounds great with vocals. And quite frankly, I don't know of too many people who will not like the sound of the mid-range. So now let's move on to the bass. I mean, look, this is a source. There's not a whole lot to talk about here. It takes on the same overall character as the mid-range. Open and clean, yet there's going to be that warmth and richness there. But now it's time to move on to the most important part of this evaluation, which is to comment on synergy, because I feel that is so important in terms of getting a great experience out of this unit. So let me put it to you like this. I think it sounds best when you pair it up to systems that have something of an opposite presentation. Let me explain what I mean. So if you have a stereo system right now that you feel is warm and otherwise very easygoing in nature, then there's a good chance that if you were to buy this, it will be too much of a good thing. And while it would sound very warm and easygoing, it may also give the music this almost lifeless and dull presentation. So I would advise against pairing it up with more laid back sounding systems. However, if you're somebody who possesses either a neutral sounding system or even better, a lively sounding system, and you're saying, man, I wish I could tone down to treble just a little bit and bring out the mid range a bit more. I wish I could get a little bit more warmth and body and tone and texture, then this is going to be a fantastic match. So the only other thing I need to comment on is super audio performance. So SACDs, of course, sound wonderful through this unit. Now, overall, it does take on the same general character that I described, warm, rich, 
dark, full-bodied, yet with Super Audio CDs, the top end opens up quite a bit. The clarity, the expressiveness, all of it is exactly what you would expect from a great Super Audio listening experience. So overall, it's similar, but it is going to be, I would say, a notch above when you use a good SACD. So that is going to be my take on the performance of the Model 30N. So now it's time to talk about how it performs when you pair it up to the matching integrated amplifier. All right, so now it's time to talk about what happens when you put both of the components together. Because individually, they both have a different sonic character. The SACD network player has more of that warm, dark, and laid back presentation. Whereas the integrated amplifier has more of that open, spacious sound, where the focus is on detail and control. So what happens when you put them together, at least in my experience, is that the strengths and the weaknesses of each component offset one another, leading me to believe that this voicing was very intentional. So let me give you some examples. Starting off with the SACD network player, yes, it has a smooth presentation. It's pleasant to listen to, but I confess there are times when I feel like the top end is just a little too rolled off and a little too safe sounding, like it could benefit from just a little bit of energy, some kind of kick. And that is exactly what the integrated amp provides. It's naturally open, spacious, and lively presentation perfectly complements the smooth sound of the source, leaving you with something that's in between. Now you get something that's still smooth and easy to listen to, only there's actual life and expression to the top end. And then with the integrated amplifier, I admit that I feel like it could benefit from having some warmth and body within the mid-range, particularly the upper mid-range, and that is exactly what the source provides leaving you, again, with this balance between having an open and clear sounding presentation, but now there's actually some warmth, some body, some dimensionality to the sound. And ultimately, I feel like the combination gives you this balance of virtues. You get openness, clarity with warmth. You get a top end that's easy to listen to, yet it still has great detail, great expression to it. This combination actually has good power behind it. Now, no, it's not the muscular kind of power that's always reminding you of the fact that, yeah, this is, can drive most speakers pretty well. No, it's more like a refined delivery of that power. Think of it like a European sports car. It's there when you need it. Now, ultimately, of course, this stack does have a sound to it. I would classify it as being still warm and smooth sounding, leading me to believe that this is going to be best for somebody who says, hey, look, I want a balance of virtues. I want liveliness, but I want it to be warm. I want it to be easy to listen to, but I also want detail. But ultimately, I want something that I can just sit back, pair up whatever speakers I want to listen to on this setup and know that I'm going to be in mostly for a good time. If that's you, there's a good chance that you're going to like the stack. Now, before I move on, I need to address one thing that I noticed in my comment section on my review of the Model 30 integrated amplifier, which was there are tons of people, dozens and dozens and dozens of people who are complaining about it using a Class D module. And don't get me wrong, I get it. I totally get it. But I'll tell you this. I feel like most of the people who feel that way would totally fail a blind test when it comes to this system because it really doesn't sound like your traditional Class D amplifier. Instead, it just sounds good, period. Not just for Class D, just period. And when you pair them up to the right speakers, it can deliver a downright emotional experience. So let me give you some examples here. In fact, it's time to just go over the kind of speakers I feel that this stack pairs up well to and the kind of speakers it may not pair up well to. So examples of speakers that it sounds great with would be anything that takes on a slightly warm character. I would say Dyn Audio's Evoke series, the Dyn Audio Contour Eyes would make for a great match. Of course, Bacard Audio is going to be the safe option. We also have the Triangle Genese line, and a real special match is between this stack and Gershman speakers. Very good combination. In fact, I don't mind saying that. I would take this stack with the Gershmans over my Luxman AMR combination. It's all about synergy. Now, I also feel like this stack would work well with different sounding speakers from the likes of Focal and Kef. Now, that may surprise some of you, but hear me out here. The mid-range on this stack is naturally warm and full-bodied, and if anything, I think this is what Focal and Kef products could benefit from. But at the same time, all the other strengths of this combination will perfectly suit what those brands already do so well. The only speakers I've found that doesn't really sound all too great with this stack would be the Klipsch Heritage. The tonality is okay, 
but it's more about the noise floor because on regular speakers, you will never notice any noise whatsoever. But on high sensitivity horn speakers, particularly the Forte threes on up, you're going to notice some hiss coming from the horns. Now for some people, that's not going to be a big deal, but for people like me, quite frankly, it is a deal killer. So it's just something to be aware of. Otherwise guys, that's about it. I think the only other thing I need to mention, oh yeah, I think I got one thing wrong in my review of the integrated amplifier. So I remember saying that the entire front fascia is plastic and that's not entirely true. While the units were turned off one day, I just rubbed my hand against it, don't judge, and I noticed that actually it's kind of cold on the front. Plastic doesn't feel cold when something's off and it's definitely not cold out right now. So I discovered that actually the front plate on both units is actually aluminum, or at least there's a thin strip of aluminum on the front and all the knobs are also metal. Cool stuff. Anyways, guys, let's wrap up this review with my final thoughts. So ultimately, I like this stack. I find the aesthetic to be refreshing. Now, I admit that at first I didn't have a positive reaction to it, but now that I've had it in my room and I've had a chance to look at it in different forms of light, I mean, it to me looks really, really good. And I'm glad that Morantz decided to be bold and deliver something that's a little bit different because almost everything looks the same anymore in this landscape. But when it comes to performance, look, I think it's good. Yeah, $5,000 for the stack is not cheap, but I think you get what you pay for, leading me to say that, hey, this is definitely something that is worth an audition. Anyways, guys, that is going to be my take on the Model 30 system. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, peace. Mm -hmm.